Hello again, everybody. Tim Clagg alongside Rhett Boyd. So glad to have you here for this Saturday evening matchup here, non-conference matchup between Southview and St. Francis. Southview, they're off to another terrific start this season. 7-0 and coming in here. And last night on senior night on this home floor, they got off to a quick start. 22-5 to advantage over Napoleon in that first eight minutes of play. I'm looking forward to this premier big men matchup here. First for Southview, their big man, A.J. Jump, the junior. He's added about 15, 20 pounds of muscle. His offensive production has increased, averaging over 11 points per game. But this season, he's added that three-point shot in his arsenal. Yeah, it, it all comes from that added muscle you talked about. He averages about a little more, four more points a game from a season ago. You said it. He's always been able to score from the inside, but now he can extend from behind the arc. He's shooting 43% from the big line this year. Look for him to utilize all three levels of the floor here tonight against the Knights. Well, Ron Hornby. He's been a work in progress the last 14 months, but his production has increased as well, averaging over 13 and a half points a game. 52% field goal percentage from the field. And oh yeah, he can shoot and stroke it from deep. And that's what makes them really tough to guard are their high-low looks. Because when he goes high and Mays is posting up inside, he can extend behind the three-point line as well. It's the rubber match here in this series. Last season in the two meetings, they split the pair. We'll have the opening tip coming up next between Southview and St. Francis. Central's trying to figure out, still in this season with a young group with no seniors, their identity, what kind of style they like to play. Well, I'll tell you what, they do not back down from anyone. Brian Bishop, two for two. And how about this start for the Irish? Three for three. From the perimeter, Burden with the finger roll at the rim. Sam Lee taking it away. This team is growing up right in front of our eyes. Bishop again, unattended two, three for three from outside for the sophomore. Brian Bishop forces a tornado's timeout. Dobbs to Janetti. Janetti bringing it down. The dangerous pass. Idika had to go up and get it. He loses the handle. And Snow with a baseball pass up ahead, underhanding to Anderson with the two-hand dunk. In this situation, the last couple seasons, Macy Stringfellow's been the hero most recently in the Fairview game, hitting the buzzer beater. But everything right now being controlled by Napoleon, looking for their first lead since 5-2, to two, and they take the lead. The made three as it's canned from outside as they have a 48-45 lead on the made three by Emma Pedroza, the 51% three-point shooter, the sharpshooter. Look for Northview to be very patient and execute here with time winding down in the first half. They find themselves trailing by four at the moment. High screen coming from Noe. Sharp turning the corner. He'll pull up to get him within one. He sinks it. Perrysburg led by six in the final minute. Northview able to pull back within one. It has been a tightly contested game here in the early rounds of the chess match. Perrysburg, 30-29 advantage at the half. Lords ranked fourth in NAIA in all of defense, and they led the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Oh, no look feed to Egbo, who pounds it in with one hand. Oh, with the no-look pass by Brett Lau. Central Catholic trying to be the giant slayer one more time in this Division II OHSAA tournament. They trail by six as we kick off the third quarter. Just four players scored in the first half. Livingston knocking down Bishop. Can't secure the ball cleanly. It's Comives. You saw them trying to take the foul right away. That was Bishop who was switched and matched up with Livingston then opening possession. Sam Clagg alongside Rhett Boyd. So glad you could join us for this March Madness matchup and a late foul by as Jackson was attacking, met there by Chico Johnson and Sam Lee right at the rim. Hey, what, what explosion by Jackson going off one foot, getting right to the front of the rim. Covers a lot of ground, long strider. Six foot six, 170 pounds. We're feeling this young man is going to play 
at the next level and be very efficient, especially able to get it done at the charity stripe, four for four tonight. He's the only player that has shot from the free throw line in that first half of the Griffins. And how about 15 points, 15 rebounds, 10 assists in your district final win over Norton to compliment Chris Livingston. Stat sheet filler. As he misses the second attempt, he goes one for two from the line. Just got that underhand ball. Underhand pass to Johnson inside. Johnson getting free in the finger roll finish as he knocked his defender down. They were overloading that other side of the floor, and it allowed him to get free and some separation. So the screening action on the backside occupied the weak side defense. Chico Johnson, I like it by Coach Floyd. Let's get him going early. Get him one-on-one -on -one isolation in the low block area to catch this. Livingston over to Peoples. Peoples double clutching. That's his first basket of the evening, the six-foot-three-inch senior, all because of the penetration by Chris Livingston off the bounce. Seven point advantage. Here's Thames getting it inside, going straight up with it, and it drops in as Sam Lee has six here. I think you, you look at halftime, the Irish coaches have said, Look, we got to reestablish the low block area. We do that, driving lanes are going to be open for us as the half goes on, and then we'll be very we'll be versatile offensively. And good job so far here with Johnson and Lee on the low block. Especially, too, you get that entry to the post. You have four other guys that can knock it down from outside at any given time. And, and if, and if, if Buchel is going to be content with guarding the perimeter tight, you're going to get those one-on-one -on -one options inside. You just got to take advantage of it. Good closeout on the baseline into Peoples inside. Had a mismatch against Thames. Count the basket. He'll look to add one more coming from the free throw line. Scoreless in the first half. You see the adjustment by Coach Dent here, wanting to get a senior some touches around the rim. Yeah, we need you. We need you in the second half here. Only four guys scored for Buchel in the opening half, and people is getting going early to make this team that much more versatile and balanced offensively. Averages 12.3 and 9.6 rebounds. Finishes the three-point play lead. Back up to eight for the Griffins, and this is turned over. Jackson laid up and in, feeding it off to Chris Livingston for two more. Largest lead of the game for the Griffins here as we're two minutes through the third quarter. Johnson hesitates, drives, puts it up. Boy, that hit every part and then just dropped out. The Central's got to be careful here. they got to get back collective, collectively to get a stop. Inside, Peoples off the penetration from Cordell Livingston. The lead up to double digits here. Timeout called by Coach Mike Floyd here. Seeing the Griffins come out, a lot more energy on the floor for them. Packed house tonight at the Whitmer Fieldhouse as the Whitmer Panthers host the visiting Central Catholic Fighting Irish in a midweek track matchup. Good evening, welcome courtside, Tim Flagg alongside Deion Thompson here. And both these teams are coming off thrilling games. Saturday night, Whitmer going down to Tremainsville, taking on their rival, the Start Spartans, and walking away with a victory for Central, though, Dion, They lost a double overtime thriller against Cardinal Stritch. Well, we got to address this jacket. It's hot in here, and he came with the red jacket. For the Whitmer Panthers, they only play six players, but this is a very senior-heavy team. They start four seniors in their lineup. This is a close-knit group. Oh, yeah. When, when you look at them, they play really well. And when you have seniors, you always have an opportunity to win. We Tonight, we're going to keep an eye on two X-Factor players. First, for Central Catholic, Jonathan Burks, one of the post players down low. Last week, 12 points against Waite, 12 points against Cardinal Stritch. Burks has been the model of consistency. He's one of Central's bigger guys. Don't get a, we don't talk about him a lot, but if you watch him, very consistent on the boards. Great post score. Another player that holds this Whitmer Panther team together, senior Leon Hughes, averaging 10.4 points per game, but he's really added a lot to his game his senior season. When you talk about Hughes, last year he was a post guy. Now he can stretch you out, knock it down behind the three-point line, and he's a very spirited player. You watch him, kind of emotional kid, love his game. These two teams split their regular season contest one year ago. We get the party started next, opening tip-off next on BCSN. Defenses and physicality on both sides of the ball here tonight with 6.14 remaining, a one possession advantage for the Southview Cougars. 
trying to make it two wins in a row over the Knights. Now you got a 1-2-2 diamond pressure here, trying to trap the first pass. Good job by Southview, getting the ball back to the middle of the floor. Able to knock a three down on the last possession. Woodall, he's hit two big ones. Kenny coming back to his right. And a 30-second timeout called here by Coach Mike Reddleston. Yeah, ball got stuck on the sideline there. The last thing he wants to do is turn the basketball over. Call it, you got, you got your timeouts. Use them. Four, yeah, three left now in the final six minutes of this contest. Good timeout, timeout by Coach Reddleston. And how about the security for Southview? Taking care of the ball in the second half. Something they really had an issue with in the first half with that pressure. They had almost 10 turnovers in that first half. Yeah, and outside of that first possession of the second half where St. Francis got a run out, they really cleaned that area up. And, and that's why they've been able to make a, a, a mini run to take the lead here. And, you know, in this contest, and every possession is valuable, especially, you know, the way the game being played out. It's a one possession, two possession ball game. You want to maximize those possessions as much as possible. They've been able to do it in the latter part of that third quarter. And so far, in the opening uh, couple minutes here of the fourth. 11 turnovers for the Cougars, just five for the Knights. Millington, he's been quiet in the second half. He's waiting for Jump to slide down in the block. There he goes, spinning inside, taking the bounce. Count the basket. He'll look to add one more coming from the line. Not sure last year he's going to be able to make this play. But with the added strength that he's put out in the offseason, you see here, set the defender up to the middle. He, the defender jumps to the high side. Good pin back move. And then you get to finish through contact. He gets the chance at an old-fashioned three-point opportunity. That's a big-time move by 24 and White. Five for six at the charity strike tonight. Good looking stroke, and it's nothing but nylon. As he picks up the old fashioned three point play, and the lead now at six. AJ Jump with 13 points. The junior having a terrific outing in this tough matchup for him. He hasn't backed down or shied away from whether it's Hornbeak, whether it's been Mays who he's been matched up on. Ooh, Mays was going to go up with it. Able to get rid of it. Lead at six now. Is this the point where you need a basket for St. Francis? Because offense has really kind of stalled out here late in this game. And they don't get a shot off. It ends up in the hands of Grant Paul, who forced the turnover. Well, something right now, they're, they're really focused on taking paint touches away. On that end of the floor, they're going to take their chance with St. Francis taking contested threes. St. Francis is only making two threes in this ball game, both of the first half. Watch Woodall right here. He's going to come up up top. The three-point shooter. Millington getting good position inside. Goes up with his left. Able to seal Stephen McCoy inside on that near block. Good job recognizing the size mismatch inside. And Millington took advantage of the Cougars. The biggest lead of the night, up eight. Eight point advantage, just two points for the Knights so far in this fourth quarter.